Alright guys, it's time to talk about Goss Guns, and if there really are any benefits to use them for the average wastelander. Now, the reason I just want to go over Goss Guns, and not all electric guns in general, is because that is a platform I'm most familiar with, as there are a handful of real life examples that I have seen and like heard about, so I know how they function relatively well. And it's also one of the biggest platforms of electromagnetic guns in the game so far because there is only one rail gun and zero coil guns. First thing I want to bring up is that Goss guns use electromagnets to propel their projectiles, meaning that they need a power source and capacitor to send them out, which means that the price on this thing quickly starts racking up. And not only that, but you're also definitely going to need a high level of experience to know how to actually make a Gauss gun properly, and most importantly, safe to the user. Because capacitors store and release high amounts of electricity, and you definitely do not want that electricity going inside of you, and not the projectile. And another major issue, you're not going to be able to easily swap out parts while traveling or in combat. Because like say, there's an issue with the wires or the things that the wires are connected to, then you would need a soldering iron to properly replace those wires and those parts. All this means is that your average wastelander isn't gonna be building these or repairing these by themselves anytime soon without the proper equipment. And speaking of gas gun electronics, Let's talk about how they probably wouldn't fare too well if something like water, mud, dirt, or sand got into them, especially the scrap made post slash goss guns, which most likely aren't airtight or watertight for that matter. So say it rains or you're in some muddy trenches or even a sandstorm, then most likely your goss gun is gonna get some stuff inside of it, either temporarily making your gun inoperable or forcing you to open it and clean it out. Or even worse, it can just completely destroy parts, requiring you to replace them. And if you don't have any tools nearby to replace them, then you're probably in trouble. That's why this especially confused me when they labeled the shooting star as a frontiersman gun. When compared to regular firearms, it's much more delicate and difficult to repair. And that is not the kind of gun you want when you're out in the wilderness by yourself. Now, of course, that isn't to say that Goss guns are all bad, of course. They do have one major benefit to them, and that is their ammo is incredibly cheap and easy to produce. The best analogy for this would be when you compare Gauss gun ammunition to conventional ammunition is if you still remember your algebra class and you remember those questions where it's like Johnny's company charges a high one-time fee and a low hourly rate, while Sam's company charges a low initial fee and a high hourly rate. And how many hours would it take for John's company to be the cheaper option? You can apply that same logic to Gauss gun ammunition and the guns themselves, because Gauss guns are definitely a lot more expensive while their ammo is cheaper, and regular firearms are usually cheaper while their ammo is a lot more expensive and a lot more difficult to make. So it would be like, how many bullets would you need to expend for Gauss guns to eventually be cheaper? And that's fine and all, but the issue is, the only time Gauss guns are worth it in this equation is when you're using high calibers or sustained fire like a machine gun. When it comes to something like 50 caliber and higher, each round starts getting quite expensive. So saving every dollar and every hour working on manufacturing these bullets counts. And when it comes to something like machine guns where you just blow through so much ammo, the difference in ammo price also starts adding up. But the issue with that is, if you've noticed, all the Goss guns that are currently in the game right now are the complete opposite of both of these. So I don't even think most wastelanders would even live long enough to put enough rounds through any of these guns to make that cost of rounds actually beneficial. But of course, you could also say that the fact that it's super easy to make bullets for Goss guns, because all you really need to do is find some random scrap of metal, all you have to do is melt it down to make bullets for your Goss gun, which is technically free, and all you really need is the tools to melt down and mold metals. But that point isn't necessarily true because you definitely cannot just grab any old piece of metal and stick it into this gun because it is electromagnetic, meaning you need projectiles that are magnetic. And the four biggest metals that are magnetic, meaning any other like random, weird, obscure type of metal or alloy is probably gonna get wiped out due to the metal cliff. So these four metals are iron, steel, nickel, and cobalt. And let's go through one by one here just to show you why they aren't too good of an idea. First, let's just immediately cross off cobalt because cobalt is actually an extremely rare metal 
meaning that that metal cliff would have definitely made this metal unfindable. Second, there's nickel, which is a common metal and is actually found in a lot of things. So you'd think it'd be a good choice, right? But what you need to remember here is that these bullets are getting fired out of rifled barrels. And there happens to be a reason why you don't see nickel bullets. First, you have the problem that the melting point of nickel is also 1000 degrees hotter than steel's melting point, meaning you're gonna need some heavy duty equipment to melt this kind of stuff down. And the main reason why we don't see any nickel bullets is because nickel is actually quite a hard metal, especially when compared to something like brass and lead, and it will actually damage the barrel of the gun, shortening its lifespan and turning it into a smooth bore which is something you definitely don't want to have. You need to replace the barrels quite often. And well, that's not probably going to be an easy process. Considering that the barrel is, you know, covered in wires and electromagnets and even capacitors, depending how the gun is made. Now, of course, you could use a harder material than steel, but good luck finding those metals because the main two are tungsten and titanium, which are most definitely gone because of the metal clip. I'm just gonna jump up here on the list real quick and talk about iron now. Now, of course, there's plenty of iron on Earth, and yes, you could make a bullet out of it, and it will work fine enough. Not as good as lead, but it still works. It will damage your barrel a little bit, but you have two problems here, and let me go over the major one, and that is, it's been over 90 years since the flash. There's absolutely no way if anything was even made out of iron at that point that it would still exist now, that you could just walk outside, scrape a piece of it off, and then mold it into a bullet. It has either been completely withered away or mostly just rusted. And again, that's not even mentioning the fact that by this point in the future where we have these crazy 3D printers and artificial intelligence, that we're definitely not making a lot of things out of pure iron anymore and it's most likely going to be steel aluminum or even those 3d printed plastics you could say that people are probably mining iron again and that is definitely true but now you run into the problem where you probably aren't the one who's mining this iron and don't have the equipment to mine this iron because that would be pretty expensive to set up your own mine so most likely you're buying this from someone and that defeats the whole purpose of being able to find the materials you need for free out in the wasteland and then molding it yourself now you have to buy it there are also problems with iron bullets like the fact that it would actually just rust and if they did rust and you tried shooting them depending on the severity of how long these things have been rusting. I'm not even sure if the bullet wouldn't just break apart in the barrel. And if it doesn't break apart, then it probably is gonna do a lot less damage than what it should be because rust is a very weak metal. Now, let's move on to the last one here, steel. Steel checks off a lot of the boxes. Steel is really common and would definitely survive the flash. Again, just like nickel, you're not gonna be able to make solid bullets out of this stuff because it's also gonna damage your barrel. So how about instead of that, what if we make a cord bullet? Basically, it has a core on the inside of one metal type and then it is surrounded by another metal. Of course, now it's gonna take more work, but it will still be cheaper and easier than dealing with casings, primer, and gunpowder. Now we can just immediately skip past cobalt again because, you know, can't find it anywhere. Moving on to steel, which is actually a great option here because it is found everywhere. So you just take a steel core surrounded by brass and whoops, you just made armor piercing rounds, which are restricted. Never mind. Let's start again with nickel. All I'm going to say is nickel probably have similar properties to armor piercing, but again, it's also going to be a lot more expensive to work with. Got to keep in mind the higher uh, melting points. And I cannot find a single thing about nickel cord bullets. And there's got to be a reason for why nobody's tried this yet. So I'm going to call this one also a flop. And then the last one here is iron. And sadly, again, like I said before, you're going to have to buy it from someone. And yes, it will sort of work. In fact, there are bullets that do have iron cores. There, I can only find like two ones that you could buy Remington hunting rounds with iron cores in them. So I guess at the end of the day, yes, there is an option for bullets Goss guns can actually use now, but they aren't gonna be so cheap as you will most likely have to buy both metals and now you just can't simply mold a piece of metal into a bullet. You gotta have a core and then you gotta have a casing. And it won't be so easy because if you didn't know, there's a reason why lead and brass are used to make bullets. They have a relatively low melting point and are pretty malleable. So using iron will be more difficult 
because you have to get it to much higher temperatures and will need tougher material to shape it. So it seems that that difference in price between Gauss gun bullets and gunpowder bullets is quite small in the end. But there is a third option, however, I haven't talked about yet, and that's electromagnets that can move non-magnetic material. Right now, this stuff is extremely new and experimental. Again, hypothetically, this is the future where we have made fully working AI, fully working robotics and prosthetics, so it's safe to assume that we have advanced a lot more than we have now. But basically, this article explains the reason things are magnetic is because the electrons are moving in the same direction. And so what they did was send an electric charge through the material to get the electrons to spin in the same way. And all they needed was just one volt to do this. But this brings up several problems when it comes to incorporating this into our Gauss gun, because now you can only use materials that are actually conductive. So we're still mainly limited to metals. This does mean we can bring back our conventional brass, copper, and lead bullets on the table again. There is just one tiny detail I forgot to mention about this whole thing, and that's the fact that as soon as you stop sending the volts through the material, that material immediately starts becoming magnetic. And the problem with that is Gauss guns have multiple electromagnets along points of the barrel, meaning you will need to add an entire system that continuously sends electrons through the projectile until it leaves the barrel. Adding something like that increases the cost, increases the complexion, increases the weight, and makes the thing even more dangerous to the user when something goes wrong. Because most times, you're gonna put your hand near the barrel. And all of this almost makes Gauss guns even worse compared to its normal counterpart. So this isn't really a solid solution to our bullet issue either. Alrighty guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Now, of course, I know that this video isn't gonna get anything changed in ATF. It's more of a silly thing. I just kinda wanna do this for a little bit of fun and dip my toes in something different in the ATF world now. And yeah, I'll be returning to more serious critique videos pretty soon. So yeah, I'll see y'all around.